Hey guys, it's Doug with North Table Mountain Christmas Lights, and in this video we're going to take a detailed look at the design and construction of the Mega Tree, as well as the modeling in X Lights and how you set up to model both the main upper section of the tree and the bottom tree skirt and set your sequences to it. Now the construction of the tree is pretty standard. It's a 48 string, 360 degree tree. It's 13 and a half feet tall approximately to the base of the topper and the topper itself is a 36 inch Biscoyo six ring mega tree topper 270 pixels. For the controller which we'll take a look at in a moment behind the box it's a F16 V3 with two expansion boards so 48 total ports to match the 48 strings of the tree. I do like doing one string per port. It is overkill. You don't need to do that. You can double up two, three, four strings and do power injection if necessary, but I just like the simplicity of no, no power injection, not even have to worry at all, uh, one port per string, and it works out well for me. So if we take a look at the wiring coming from the Megatree controller, you see the 48 strings. They come down. Each one goes to the center skirt where it attaches to the little hub, we'll take a peek at in a moment, and then comes out here to the perimeter where I just have a pigtail separating the two strings. So the two strings themselves for that center skirt and the outer main section of the tree are separate, which helps for storage for me, and then I just plug them in here. The way I secure the lower section out here is with a ball bungee. So I just fish the ball bungee through the string there through the little grommet around the outer ring around the J bolt here and then hook this over that and this keeps it secure because it's wrapped around the bolt it's not going to go anywhere in the wind and works out very well and then obviously you can see here with the main string it just goes over the J bolt here Obviously, I put that on before I put full tension and raise the tree up higher so the string is loose. I can wrap it around here, and then we crank the tree up to full height. At the top, it's pretty standard. Um, the topper itself is from the Overkill Metal Products. It's one of their toppers. Um, I am using it with J-bolts, not their T-design. I just wanted this a little bit tighter spacing, so I like my trees to have more of a pointed top and so I could do that with this a little better. So that's what that is, um, why I'm going with the J-bolts over their um, T style that hook into it is you can get a little bit tighter top with that. For the center hub, what I did, and this is from Biscoyo, it's a HDPE, and you're not gonna get a good look at it here, but this is just a circular piece of HDPE with 48 holes, quarter inch holes for me to put just a, a quarter inch bolt through. Looks like about a two or two and a half inch bolt. And that's it. There's just end the hole for to go around the ASAP pole. I think that's the inch and a quarter tubing. So I just have the hole for that and the holes on the perimeter and that's it. And I don't need any J hooks or anything here because the load pulling on this is horizontal, so you don't need anything to cap these off, which definitely make it easy for installation. And underneath here, we can't get a good look at it, but what's going on underneath here is I have a piece of PVC pipe, maybe, I don't know, two, two and a half inch PVC pipe, just a, a coupler connector, so it's only a you know a couple inches long like this, and it slides over the outer conduit and then I just have another hole drilled and tapped in the side going horizontally like this for a small one inch uh, bolt and so I slide that on uh, when I'm first setting up the tree and this piece of HDPE rests on top of it and then I just tighten down the bolt it's basically like a set screw that you know touches the side of the conduit and that holds the height so that's how I keep this up here uh, on the height. So I don't, I can't really get the camera under it to get a good look, but that's how that's set up and holds the height of the bottom skirt. And you know what, I'm not really worried too much about snow here. Um, we do get a lot of snow, but this is south facing, so stuff melts really cool. 
uh, melts pretty quickly and it looks really cool when it is covered in snow. So even though you don't get the definition of all the pixels, it still looks cool when it's covered in snow. So I really don't care um, if this gets a little bit of snow on it for a day or two. It's just a different look of the tree. If we look inside the box here, this is a bud box. I don't know the specific model number on this one offhand. Um, it's one of the larger ones, but not the largest one. It's not as big as the one I use for my porch controller over there. But inside here, I have an F16 V3, two expansion boards. We have the Raspberry Pi, which is run in remote mode, and the buck converter there that provides power to the Pi. Um, drops the 12 volt down to 5 volts and you can see I have this LED lighting inside here and that's controlled by the switch so this little micro switch when the doors close it's off and when the door opens up that little trigger there uh, releases and the lights come on so you can have illumination at night and it just looks really cool for the power supplies we have three Meanwell LRS 350-12 12, 12 volt power supplies and they handle the over 5,000 pixels without any problem. I'll just show you how I attach the enclosure to the ASAP pole. So if you come to the back here you see I'm using the stock mounts here that the uh, bud box comes with and then I just have a small nut and bolt attaching it to a strong tie available at any uh, home improvement store and then that just uses muffler clamps to attach to the main portion of the ASAP pole. So that works very well. I leave this up year-round on the ASAP pole and then I just undo this screw right here on all four corners and just pull this off and then I just put the screw back into the enclosure to keep it in the off season so I don't lose it. And then that way this is all staying up on the pole year-round and the placement is always perfect every time. So that's that. Pretty simple and it works great. Coming up to the actual ASAP pole, get a look here. I'm using a standard ASAP pole, it's not the ASAP Senior, but I'm borrowing the larger winch, the thousand pound winch, and the plate for that would be used for the ASAP Senior. So it works pretty well on here. Um, you do have to, I think, adjust the spacers a little bit differently but you can easily use that plate um, from Biscoyo and the 1,000 pound winch without any difficulty. The other thing I do a little differently is the push pole I'm using is not EMT conduit. I found the EMT conduit was way too flimsy here and I was getting a lot of deformation of the pipe. So this is rigid conduit. Um, don't know the size offhand. It looks maybe three-quarter, not quite certain, but you can see when it comes, they give you this little threaded coupler at the end, so I just ground that down here to give a little bit larger surface area for the hook to bite into, and as you can see, you know, there's no it's deformation there. It's a lot of um, material for that hook to bite into as far as holding up the topper. So that works really well on there to hold that up. The other thing I'll kind of point out here are my guy wire system. So I came up with this. It's kind of based on the muffler clamp design. So I have three eye hooks there. Two of them are part of what attaches the muffler clamps uh, to each other. And then there's the one loose one, which is on the end. There's a small bolt behind it that holds it in place in the muffler clamp. And I do have a design for that. It's been circulated in, I think, the x lights group and the Think Tank. Um, if you search um, for the uh, Megatree um, ASAP pole guy wire uh, setup, I think you should be able to find it. And there's a PDF document for it, which details the design for that. But what I like about this is it goes on the main pole. So it's right at the 10 foot height and allows me to sit here and crank up the winch and everything works um, around it and it doesn't interfere with the winch operation. So I really like that. If you're not going too much taller than 10 feet like I am now, that works well. If you're going really high, um, I wouldn't use that by itself. If you were doing, you know, say 17, 18 feet or taller, yeah, it's nice to have a support there in the middle, but you will want something closer to the top. But since I'm only 13 and a half feet up, 
um, having that at the 10 foot mark works very well for me. As far as anchoring those guy wires, if we follow the guy wire down, we come to this turnbuckle. So I have a couple S hooks there and then the turnbuckle. I believe it's an 18 inch spiral anchor. The soil here is a very heavy clay soil, so the spiral anchor works very well for gripping in this soil. The only downside here is we do have a lot of boulders, so I tried to do a deeper, longer, um, like 30 inch auger style anchor, but just kept hitting boulder after boulder. No matter where I tried here, there's so many big rocks once you go down you know, two feet that I could not get those anchors to go all the way down. So I have to live with these, but they do work well. They've held up to many 80, 85 mile an hour winds over the years that I've been using them on the trees without issue. So in my soil, these work well, but your soil, you may have different results. So you may want to check out different style anchors. I know there's a lot of um, topics out there and videos for why mega trees fail. And those are some good insight in there as to what type of anchor is good for your soil. So you definitely want to check that out. Speaking of anchors, the other thing is anchoring the base ring down to the ground. And what I do here is the same kind of thing, except these are just 8-inch anchors. So 8-inch spiral anchors, and I have these every 2 feet or so. So every 4 um, strings, I have a different auger going all the way around. So there's 16 of those, and I just use these heavy-duty zip ties here to hold them up. And again, I'm not worried about the snow covering this. So yeah, there is going to be a little bit of snow sometime, but it melts pretty quickly. So it's low to the ground. And the other thing, it's kind of hard to pick out here, but I keep this base, it's parallel to the ground, and the ground is sloping towards the street. So if you peek through here, going towards the street, you'll notice that those strips over there they end right, right at the J-bolts. So the end of the strip coincides with the J-bolts. So they are full length strips. But on this side, I have an excess of, here we have five pixels at the end of the J-bolt. So one would go right here, which would interfere with the, um, the J-bolt. So I have that pixel loose and I have some extra pixels here. And this is just because of my slope and the way I do this. So in X lights, I actually create a submodel and put an off effect on these pixels so they're not actually illuminated. But if I were to move and want to do a full length uniform tree, I have the strips ready. Or if I were to sell this at some point, it's ready. That's the reason I did it this way. So I model them differently out of X lights. So 99.9% .9 of you are never going to ever do this. So just ignore this. But that is the reason why you, if you look at this and go, why do I have these little extra ends of the strips here? It's because I'm running it on a slope and uh, I didn't want to level my base out because the base would be too high above the street there. And I didn't like the way it looks. And this kind of allows the viewer to look into the tree and just aids with the three dimensional look I do. So that's the reason why I do that. Anyhow, that is basically it for the design of the exterior of the mega tree. The next thing we'll do is look into the programming in X Lights, and we'll show you how we set this up in X Lights. All right, so we're into X Lights now, and this was my layout for the 2019 season. As you can see, I have the mega tree depicted here with the skirt, and this is actually done with two separate models. So if I select this, you can see this is the mega tree upper is how I have named it. And obviously just the upper section of the tree. And I have the base here as well. And this is done with the spinner model. And what I've done is I've created what are called shadow models of both the base or the skirt and the upper section of the tree, which basically mirror what's going on with the mega tree I have in the background on a different preview. So what I've done here is I've created a separate preview called Megatree, and I have the Megatree here. And so this is everything. This is the base, the skirt, and the upper section of the tree all in one as if the skirt didn't exist. So I have the total 107 pixels. That's how many pixels I have on each string, including the skirt. So I have that here on my 48 strings. And what I do is I actually apply for 
pretty much every effect in most of my sequencing, the effects are being placed or rendered onto this tree. And the fact that I do the shadow models, it will re-render that in far as x lights because is concerned and depict it as we see here. So if we go into the sequencer, you'll notice I put a spiral effect here on the mega tree and on the model preview, you don't see the skirt at all because this is what's going on in that mega tree preview that we just looked at. There's no skirt there. So it's just drawing those spirals onto the mega tree. But because of the shadow models, what we have here, we zoom in, you can see the skirt is being depicted here because of the way it's rendering with the use of shadow models. So it sounds complicated, but what I'm going to do is we're going to start fresh. I'm going to start on a blank version of X-Lights and we're going to build this out. And just so we don't have any confusion here as well, I'll note that I do have two other mega trees here on this mega tree preview. And I do this for picture rendering or video rendering. If I'm going to display one of those, this only affects the upper section of the tree and it just affects how things are rendered. A um, little bit different skew and perspective on these two trees. So really nothing you need to worry about now is not concerned with what we're doing here, but it's something I've played around with. Eh, limited success. Sometimes it works better than others, but um, that's why I have a couple extra tree, extra trees there. It doesn't have anything to do with actually doing the shadow models. So with that, I'll close out of this version of X-Lights, and now we have a fresh version of X-Lights, and as you can see, I have no models whatsoever here. So we'll start by building the main mega tree. That's all-inclusive with all the pixels there. So I'll draw this out. And we'll start here. We have to define the parameters to match what we actually have. So in my case, I have 48 strings and there are 107 pixels per string. That's um, 27 pixels for the base and 80 pixels for the upper section, giving me 107 total. I do one strand per string, if you recall. So each output on the controller is its own string. Now, a lot of people don't do that. They'll do an up and down, so you'll have two strands of string, or maybe even do four strands of string and do some power injection there. So there's no right or wrong way to do that. This is just my preference. So I do one string per port, and this is how I would define that. So there's that. I'm going to move that off to the side. Actually, let me just name it Mega Tree first. And I will draw another tree. Now, this is going to be the upper section of the Mega Tree. So I'll name this Mega Tree Upper. And we'll set this up the same way. So 48 strings. And instead of the 107, it's 80 pixels for the upper section. And that's how I have the upper section of the tree. And now we'll draw or create the skirt using the spinner model. So this starts off with a five spoke spinner, but it has one string with five spokes. So that's not what we have. We have 48 strings on mine, but one arm per string or one string per each one of those. So now that looks good there. Um, lights and arm, I have 27 lights per arm. And this hollow percentage, that's just this open area here. I think somewhere around 10 looks about right. And just for aesthetics, I'll try and approximate how this would look. So maybe I move this there, that goes on top. We have this thing called perspective here on the tree. You can kind of tilt it, see it's kind of rotating. So maybe three, somewhere around there. Put that on top, go to the skirt, tweak this a little bit. That's pretty good. You play around with that more if this was on the actual layout, but that looks pretty good. So I have what we need. I have the three models. We have the mega tree with everything, and we have the upper section and the skirt. So what we need to do to define the shadow models is I'll start with the mega tree and I'll select this individual start channels here and it will pre-populate as it's currently defined with the start channel for each one of the strings. 
Now these are all incorrect and what we need to do is we're going to actually delete all of these and replace them with a shadow model which will represent the start channel of the upper section of the tree as it would represent and draw on the original full-size megatree. So I know that sounds complicated, but it's really pretty easy with the aid of your handy calculator on the computer. So as you recall from pixel 101 is each pixel, each individual pixel is made up of three channels. So one pixel is really your three channels. And in this case, 107 pixels multiplied by three is 321 channels. So really I have 321 channels between any given point here as, as I jump across each string. The other thing to note is on the upper section of the tree, I have 27 pixels ahead of it. So pixel number one back here um, at the tree or the X lights defines it normally at the back of the tree. So this pixel number one somewhere here in this back string is that's where it starts. And then I have 27 pixels before I get to the first section of the upper portion of the tree. So another calculator and we'll take our 27 and multiply that by three and we get 81. And so that means that pixel number 82 is really the very first pixel of string one of the upper section of the tree. So how do we do this? So I'm gonna come here, I'll kind of move these out to the side and we'll take this string one and I'll open up this little box here and I want this to go at the start of the model, Megatree, because it's gonna give me the other two models I have here, the so spinner model and the Megatree. So we want Megatree, so that's this guy. Start of model, but we want start channel 82. Again, that's the first channel of the upper section of the tree that we just did with our simple math. So we'll do that. And you'll notice here how it reads this or how it wrote this here is at Megatree 82. That's how it defines the shadow model. So what I'm going to do to make this somewhat easier is I'm going to try and copy this so I can just do a control V. So I will copy this there, control C, and now I can go control V and it copies that over at Megatree and then it'll be a fill in the blank. So now we're gonna come back to the calculator and let's see, I gotta bring that up here. Yes, we know. Um, actually, that reminds me, it might be easier because it's gonna give me that error each time around. I'm just gonna go here and copy and paste through this whole thing. Now you don't have to watch me do this. So I'm gonna pause the recording here and we will come back when this is done. All right, we're all done here. I got all 48 done. Good idea to hit save just in case something happens and crashes the next light so you don't have to go back and redo it. And I will bring up the calculator again. So if you recall, we said we had 321 channels between each point on the on any given point along the tree because of the 107 pixels. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this. I'll clear this and we have 82 and now I'm gonna add 321 and that gives me 403. So that's what goes here is 403. And then on the calculator, you can just hit enter and it will keep giving you the number. So the next one is 724 and then 1045. So 724, 1045, and so on. Now, obviously doing this on the screen while recording each time I click this, it moves the window off to the side. So I'm going to move this window of the calculator to my opposite screen so I can work faster. And I'm just going to hit enter there. And now we're 1366, do it again, 1687, 
do it again, 2008. And you can see here, all I'm doing is just plugging in these numbers. The calculator knows that each time I hit enter, it is adding 321. So all I have to do is just keep doing that 48 times and get these values in, and I've created the shadow model for the upper section of the tree. So once again, you don't have to watch me here. I will pause this and we'll come back when we're done. All right, we're done here. We're at the end of 15169 is my last channel, and I will save that. Now all the shadow models are set for the upper section of the tree. Now we just do the same process for the skirt. So I will select this here. Again, we'll enable individual start channels. And I'm just gonna go through here and I'm already primed with this. And so we're just gonna go through and copy and paste that at megatree we had from before. And once we're done with this, I'll resume and we'll do the math. All right, we're all done with adding the mega trees there, so I'll hit save and we'll go up to the top, bring the calculator back up, and we'll figure out the values that we need to add for each string here. So we know that we're starting with string one here at the center. It's the very first pixel, I should say pixel one. This is String one, pixel one is the very beginning here. So this start channel for string one is gonna be number one. But then we have 107 pixels before we're at the start of string two and another 107 and so on. So that was the 321 channels. So we'll start here on the calculator by going one plus 321 is 322. So that'll be at the start over here. And then after that is 643. So one, okay and then 323 or 322 excuse me and then what do we say 643 and so on and now I'll do the same thing as before where I will take the calculator and just hit enter and just keep hitting enter here getting these numbers and populating the fields and when we're done we'll resume the video All right, all done here. We have uh, 15088 at the end and we'll hit save. So now what we've done is we've determined the shadow models for both the skirt and the upper section of the tree, which mirror the actual starting locations as if it were the full size tree. So it sounds complicated, but as you saw, it's really not that difficult. And all you have to do is do the math for your own size tree, whether you have um, 70 pixels on the upper section or 50, or you have 20 pixels down below. You just do the math. You just multiply whatever value of pixels you have by three, and that gets you your channel number, and then you know to do the same process to determine the actual starting locations for each one of these. Just the key to take away out of this is on the skirt, since this is where we're starting the very first pixel, we have number one here, because it's the very first pixel, and then on the upper section of the tree, what really is the start of channel one here is really in my case 27 pixels in, hence we start here at channel 82 from the main model. So now that we've done that, if we were to do a sequence, we can throw the effects on the upper section of the tree and they will render on here. But right now, if we were to do that on your default preview screen, you're gonna see the effects on both of these trees because both of these trees are going to be visible and you really probably don't have two trees so we need to make this invisible so the way we do this on the main tree is we create it into a separate preview so I'm gonna come here to the preview drop down menu put create new preview you can name this whatever you want I'll name it mega tree and we'll hit OK now it took us to that preview and there's nothing here so I'll go back to default and I'll take this tree and you can see here it has this option for preview and it's on default and now we're going to move it to mega tree. So now I'll save that. What that's done is that's put that preview in this mega tree window here. But 
what we want to do in the sequencer is make certain that we have all three of these models. Now you may not actually want to do something on the upper section or the skirt, but you may, so I would add these in. For instance, when I'm doing pictures and video, I will put them on the upper section of the tree only because they're not going to look good on the bottom section. So that's one case where you're going to want to do effects on the upper section. And sometimes you may want to do something different between the upper section and the skirt. I've done it a few times, just not very often. So that's another reason. So we'll go in here to the sequencer. We'll start a new sequence. Animation. I'll do all my models. And as you can see, that's brought everything over. If it didn't, or if you already have a setup and you have different views, you may need to go into Edit Display Elements, right-click there, find your model in this available list. Obviously, I have nothing available since they're all over, and manually drag it in. So you may have to do that depending on your setup and your previews that you already have available. Obviously, here we are starting from a, a blank um, sequence or blank setup next lights, and it brought everything over. So. Just FYI, you may need to do that. So what I'll do here, I'm sure this is a, not the way I have mine set up normally, but I'll just clear this stuff out here. We don't need those. And I'll take the spiral effect and drop it down on the mega tree. And you're gonna see something here potentially. If you look closely at it, it's doing something a little weird here. The red is kind of overlapping with the white, the white's the red, so it's not looking the way it should. And that actually has to do with the um, wiring or the starting location here. It defaulted to end counterclockwise. And what we actually need it to be set to is center counterclockwise. But there's one other thing we need to do, and I'll show you that here. We'll go back to the sequencer. We'll look at this again and you'll still see it doesn't quite line up. Now the before the area on the upper and the lower were kind of offset a little bit. So now they're lined up, but the colors are off. And the reason is the skirt is still re reversed. So what we need to do is we need to grab this handle and rotate it. And I'll show you why. Actually, I'll go back here. So I'll leave it the way it was and I'll show you how I figured this out. And this is good advice with a mega tree anyhow of know where your starting location was. I was helping a guy this year and he was having a problem with images were not displaying in the center of the tree and it turned out he didn't pay attention to where his start channel was with the first string. So the way I like to do this is just take an on effect and we'll throw this on the mega tree and this is going to be a little skewed here because it's trying to do on the base but you'll actually get the idea. So you can see here what's going on is when I move this down to each string, they're not in sync with each other. So the mega tree starts in the back. So you can tell here, this is the back of the tree and it's moving counterclockwise. But if I take this and put it on the spinner, or the spinner, the base, I never re renamed it. You can see I already had something there I was working with earlier. So if we take it here and we move it, watch on the house preview. Don't pay attention to the model preview. Watch on the house preview where it goes. It's starting in the front and moving towards the back. So it's doing that, but the mega tree itself is moving in the back and going to the front. So you see they're opposite each other and that's why it's acting up. So what we need to do is come here and flip this around. So flip it 180 degrees, save it, come back here. Now, if you um, drop it in, you can see they're kind of lined up. They're pretty close there. Obviously, that would be the fine-tuning differences in your layout. But you can see it mirrors what's going on here is mirroring um, what the tree is actually doing. 
where are we now? We're on the spinner, that's why I need to move. It jumped on me as it scrolled down. So we just, I'll close the spinner out, we don't need this. Just put it on these 48 strings, that on effect, and you can see they mirror each other all the way around. So that's a good, good test. So it shows us everything is lined up and when we put it on string one, you can see it's at the back of the tree and goes counterclockwise. So that is a really important lesson there. You always want to know where is your string one, which way is it going, because if X lights is modeled one way and you go out and you build your mega tree and you plug your strings in and it doesn't match what you have going on in X lights, things aren't going to line up. So that's something you really want to watch out for. And that's a good way to do it is you double click on the model here so that it opens up the individual strings and you can put an effect on it, just throw an on effect on it and see what it's doing. So that's a good way you can test it. So now if we go and look at our spiral, it matches what um, everything lines up here, it matches and it looks cool. So the model preview is doing one thing and the actual house preview is doing another. And so you can do this with all your effects now and whatever you wanna throw on here is going to render out um, properly. And if you want to put something just on the upper section, there you go. You just move that effect to the upper section and there it is. If you want to put it just on this on the skirt, there it is. And so that way now you can put effects wherever you want it. You can utilize all three of these, but most of the time you're just going to drop effects onto the, me onto the mega tree, which isn't really um, this mega tree. It's the mega tree on the preview here. So you're gonna drop the effect, it'll be on here, but it's gonna render as if it were on here because we created the shadow models. And then if you have a picture effect of something you wanna do, you can throw your picture and drop it down onto the upper section of the tree and you'd have, um, it would render there. So anyhow, that's how you would set this up in X lights with utilizing shadow models and three different models for the main tree and then the upper section and the lower section or the base. So that's it. That's how you do it. I know it uh, kind of seems complicated, but when you break it down to the individual elements and do the math for calculating the start channel values, it really goes pretty simple. So hope you learned a lot on that. If you have any questions, just let me know.